Welcome back to The Nose Plays. Today we're going to do a new type of video called The Nose Knows, where I'm basically going to try doing just a, a brief overview of some element of a strategy game that uh, I feel pretty confident in and might have some useful information to share with you. Today's video will be a prelude to my Endless Space 2 content that I'll be making in the very near future. Um, if you have any ideas on something specific you'd like me to try, please leave it in the comments below. Right now I'm really interested in doing some Valter content. I know a lot of people are doing uh, Valter DLC content right now. So if you're hungry for more of that and you'd like to see me do that, uh, please let me know. If you'd like to see me do something else, let me know as well. Today, however, uh, we're not going to have any kind of a Let's Play. What we're going to do is we're going to talk specifically about Endless Space 2's technology screen and the tech tree system that Amplitude has put in place for this game is quite impressive, but it can be a little daunting. Uh, there's a lot of hidden information, and I think it's really beneficial for new players if they get just a quick tutorial of how this screen works and uh, some of the information that is readily available to them. So, I've started up a brand new game with the United Empire uh, just to give you a basic idea of what this looks like when you first fire it up. Um, the research tree is huge in, in some senses, but we'll break it into bite-sized chunks that make it a lot easier to deal with. So the first thing that I would highly recommend doing uh, when you get to the research tree is over here in this corner of the screen, in the uh, upper left-hand corner, you have uh, this little window that's pretty much a static window throughout the game. It gives you a lot of information. And one of the things that Amplitude is exceptionally good at is providing information to the player in the use of tooltips that pop up when you mouse over. These mouse over tooltips are extremely valuable. And there's a lot of discussion as to why Amplitude does not include uh, a Wikipedia slash Civipedia, you know, Tome of Wonders, you know, Age of Wonders 3 does the Tome of Wonders, Civilization does the Civipedia. It's basically like a wiki document with a bunch of hyperlinks that give you all kinds of information about the game. Amplitude chose not to do that. What they do instead is they provide these tooltips and pretty much every uh, number or symbol on the screen you can mouse over and it will give you a tooltip with more information. So utilize those tooltips, take the time to actually read what they have to tell you. That is your replacement for a traditional Civipedia style Wiktionary. Um, so use it, a uh, good, good little piece of advice. Um, the next thing is these three buttons here we're gonna talk briefly about. Uh, this one, you can see we can zoom in and we can get a little bit more information um, when we zoom in. This is the default section that you'll be navigating and if you hold the left mouse button you can grab the screen and move it around so if you want to scoot to different parts of the uh, technology wheel that's how you do that left mouse button. Um, but I'm gonna stay in this mode for the moment and I'm gonna explain why and that is this button. So this is the display research key. This tells you what all of these symbols actually mean. And it's very useful information. So the very first thing that you're gonna notice is, uh, we'll start down here at the bottom. We have uh, researched technologies. They will have this symbol. And you can see we have two of those already. So the United Empire starts with two researches already unlocked. Most empires start with one or two researches already unlocked. They will vary depending on what faction you're using, uh, but just about everybody starts with uh, two researches. The next thing that you're gonna notice is that we have several available researches. These are going to be the bubbles in the um, bluish gray portions of the technology wheel. These are the sections of the technology wheel that we've unlocked. So we have two sections here, we have one section here, two sections here, and one section here. Those bubbles are all ones that we could start researching on our first turn. Then 
outside of those we have technologies that are not available those technologies are not available because each wedge has five tiers tier one tier two tier three tier four and tier five all the way around the circle in order to unlock the next tier you have to have researched some number of the previous tier and that is a growing number so for example you'll notice that we have tier 2 unlocked in these two wedges the reason we have tier 2 unlocked in these two wedges is because we've researched one previous tier 1 tech already already completed that one tech will unlock tier 2 we can go back and we can research this if we want but it won't move us forward and I'll explain how moving forward works in the tier system when we get to the second tier you'll notice there's more things to research uh, there's four potential researches in this particular section of the wedge it will take two of these any two of these four to unlock tier three now again I can go back and research this this one will not help me unlock tier 3 it might be useful and it may be one that we definitely want to research but it is not useful towards moving to the next tier the next tier is only unlocked when you get two of the previous tier so the first transition requires one research to move to tier 2 to move to tier 3 you need two researches to move to tier four you're gonna need to research three things in tier three and so on and so forth you can see if we look at the military section here we only have access to tier one and if we were to research either one of these it would unlock the next tier so important to note if you want to move up the tiers you have to stay with the most recent tier that you've unlocked in order to move forward you can always go back and research earlier texts they will not help you in terms of moving forward towards unlocking the next tier that's an important thing to note and we'll talk about why that is in just a moment um, there's a couple other ones here that we didn't discuss we're going to discuss them now so if we come down here uh, there are two types of branches that you'll see within the tech tree the first branch is the exclusive tech this exclusive branch denotes that you may only choose one or the other of these two if you pick one the other one will become disabled um, most of those are in the military wedge of the uh, tech tree the tech wheel but there are a few other ones elsewhere um, primarily this one here and I, I'm not certain but I believe there may be a few other uh, factions who have unique technologies that might include some more of those so every faction has a number of unique technologies to them that are sprinkled throughout the generic technologies some of them are completely unique others are just modified versions of what the skill would normally be and you'll see those uh, when we zoom in here shortly the last thing I want to point out uh, from this key is the deeds uh, we'll talk about deeds briefly uh, a little bit later but you can see they have a very similar pattern uh, except they're diamond shaped and so we can have lock deeds failed deeds available deeds and completed deeds we currently have two available deeds to us um, we have unlocked a deed in the tier 2 portion of this wedge and a second deed in the tier 2 portion of this wedge so mousing over them will tell you what those deeds are and what their rewards are um, deeds are basically um, single uh, goals that a only one player in the game can achieve and once that player the first player to achieve, achieve that goal gets the reward it's kind of like a race so whoever can make that building or accomplish that task will get a reward and the first player to do it gets the reward and nobody else 
Um, they can be pretty powerful rewards depending on your faction and what your needs are at any given time in the game. So it's good to keep an eye on these. Um, I do believe, at least in Endless Legend, and I'm, I'm not certain because I haven't paid enough attention to them in this game, but I believe that the rewards and the actual um, stipulations that they ask you to achieve are different from game to game, and they're hidden until you unlock them. So I can't like preemptively start working towards this one because I don't know exactly what it's going to be. I, there may be a couple of different choices that it could be, uh, but I can't preemptively guess. I have to actually get to the point where I've unlocked that tier to see what it is. So that's good to know. Uh, this screen, once you know all of this information, isn't very useful, and it does kind of clutter up the screen a little bit, so we can turn it off. Now we're going to go ahead and zoom in. And again, we're going to get some more information when we zoom in. Left click allows us to drag the screen around. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to focus on the military branch for a couple of reasons. And you're going to see we now have some information on Tier 1. So this number denotes Tier 1, and it tells us all of the benefits that we get from unlocking Tier 1. Tier 1 is unlocked by default for all four branches. So every empire is going to start with these same things. However, you'll notice directly above us is the Tier 2 branch. And the Tier 2 um, rewards are basically upgrades of a lot of the things that we started with. You'll also notice there's a little lock symbol, and only one of them. This means that if we research one of these two texts, as I mentioned before, this will be unlocked. We will immediately get access to all of these, and we can start researching any of these. These become available for research. Now, one thing to keep in mind. When you're researching technology, sometimes the rewards from unlocking a tier are more valuable than the actual thing you're researching. So keep that in mind. Once I've researched my first one of these texts, the next tech that I research in this particular portion of the, the tech wheel will also grant me all of these. That can be the, the difference that makes me choose a tech in this part of the wheel as opposed to another part of the wheel because unlocking these benefits can be very beneficial if done at the right time. So keep those in mind. Moving over here and you can see we've already got this technology but there were no benefits for tier one. So not every tier has benefits, only some of them do and you'll have to pay attention to which ones are which. This tier doesn't start with any special benefits, and in fact, tier two also does not start with any special benefits. However, it does provide us the option of a deed. So this is one of those races that we talked about earlier. The first empire to achieve this race gets a reward, and in this case, the reward is 75 uh, Red Sang. This is a luxury resource that can be used for a variety of things. It may be beneficial to you, it may not be beneficial to you. Either way, if you can achieve this reward by doing things that you would naturally do, you might as well try. This one is just have three unique star system improvements in your empire. So yeah, if you have high industry at the beginning of the game, maybe you got a lucky planet, maybe you're an industry-based faction, this would be a good one to go ahead and focus on to get those free resources that you could then use to leverage other advantages throughout the game. Again, moving to tier three is gonna require two technologies in this portion of the wheel. Once we've request, uh, completed two technologies, the second technology that we get in this portion of the wheel will also unlock this special benefit. So the tier three portion of economy and trade has a special benefit. And it's actually a very powerful one. Uh, it's basic system development. It basically allows you to upgrade your cities with luxury resources, or if you're the vaulters with the new strategic resources. And that can give your 
uh, systems a huge boost to their outputs and you get to customize them to some extent based on what resources you have on hand. So this can be extremely powerful uh, if done at the right time. We're going to go ahead and move on down here and now is a good time to talk about what these things are. So zooming out, turning this back on, here is a good example of using the tooltip. Facilitating tech. Discover the first technology in order to reduce the cost of the second technology. It's pretty simple. Um, one of the things that's not intuitive about this is many people look at this initially and think, oh, I have to prerequisite this in order to get both of these. That's not the case and that's not what these lines indicate. What they indicate is that if I go ahead and I research this first, these two technologies become cheaper than they would normally be. So when you're trying to research things quickly or when you're trying to um, maintain a steady clip at gathering new technologies, looking for these branches can help you reduce the time it takes to learn new things. Very important. Notice also the science and exploration tier one gives us some benefits. So we start with all of these benefits up front. Researching a single technology in this tier will unlock tier two and it will provide us immediately with these two special modules for our ships as well as a new deed. We don't know what this deed is yet but as soon as we unlock it it will be revealed and the first player to achieve that task will gain a benefit. Okay, moving over to Empire and Development. So, we've talked a little bit about what the chains are. We've talked a little bit about the tier bonuses and the deeds. Let's go ahead and let's show you a little bit more detail. So you have the option to display unlocks. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to turn this on. And you're going to see a whole bunch of information just popped up on the screen. Now the cool part about this is Amplitude does an exceptional job of color coding their UI. So everything is color coded. That means that if I want to find some specific piece of information, I can look for a color and that will give me that information or at least point me in the right direction. For example, one of the first things that you'll notice when I turn this on is maybe these green circles here. Green circles indicate technologies, buildings, structures, um, static buffs, something to do with enhancing your food or population production. So if I mouse over this green one, you can see that this is going to be a food improvement. I know it's a food improvement for two reasons. Number one, before I even mouse over it, I can see this little building icon. This building icon is always denoted of a system improvement. It's a building that you can build on any system and it will provide an improvement to one of your resources. I know it's going to be a food improvement because it's green. Beautiful. Beautiful and it's very clever and you pick it up very quickly but your first time looking at it you got all this information and you may not know what it means um, just take the time to mouse over some of these things and start to see the patterns that amplitude has laid out for you they're, they're very very apparent they're very easy to pick up another perfect example of this we look over here we notice that this star is our influence resource this has a lot to do with diplomacy with making deals with doing all kinds of um, law related stuff and notice down here on the bottom let's look at this technology right here I have two purple circles uh, this one is a building and this one is a little planetary uh, looks like planet Saturn so when I mouse over this this is a planetary specialization and it's specifically a planetary specialization that increases our influence beautiful what's neat is every single planetary specialization is going to have this same icon there is one for food there's one for industry there's one for dust 
there's one for science and in fact there's multiple tiers of them that you can actually make them better uh, by learning higher level ones they all have the same little planetary symbol so if i'm looking for a way to enhance a planet that has a high population this is a perfect thing to look for and i can just scan very quickly and i can see right here oh look there's an enhancement to this ability and right here oh look an even greater enhancement to the same static ability give all my population plus three influence powerful everything that's purple here's a purple building the embassy what is it going to do it's going to provide me with some benefit to my um, negotiations to my um, diplomacy so what this one does is it's minus 20 points required to unlock the next hero on the empire new heroes perfect so a great way to uh, figure out what you're looking for is to look for colors I'll bet you can guess what the red things represent military everything in the game that's military typically has a red color associated with it so this is a red ship design red different ship design red building that enhances uh, manpower it's in red because it has to do with military beautiful approval let's say that I get in a situation where I need approval approval throughout the game is usually denoted uh, with a pink color pink symbols what happens if I mouse over this oh look it gives me plus five it's a building that gives me plus five approval per system level awesome yeah, so so the, while there's a lot of information here it's very easy to kind of sift through it and figure out exactly what we're looking at there's one more symbol that I haven't mentioned yet and it's this guy right here uh, this icon denotes technology that is specific to the Imperials affinity so anytime you're dealing with a symbol similar to this for your faction your faction symbol you're looking at a unique technology in some way nobody else has that exact same technology it's been modified it's been changed it's been replaced by a different one uh, it is a faction unique one and those are ones you really want to pay attention to and the reason being is all of those faction specific technologies really feed into the play style of that particular faction they're usually better versions of other technologies or they're modified to work better with the faction in question so whenever you're looking at the technology tree uh, you want to pay a special attention to those particular technologies that are faction specific just because they tend to play very well into whatever the faction is normally supposed to do that doesn't mean that you have to play the faction that way and you very well could play diplomatic cravers but you're gonna find that most of the craver type warmongering um, traits are going to be expressed in their faction specific traits and a lot of them are probably going to be military same thing with the uh, Lumeris you'll see a lot of trade related diplomacy related um, you know dust related faction specific traits and that's because that's kind of their thing okay moving back the last thing that I want to talk about when talking about the technology wheel you cannot technology you cannot um, research everything in the technology wheel you have to learn to eventually become very laser focused on what your goals are and so there's a lot of things here to research getting to this outer wheel is very difficult and having the option of getting multiple 
tier 5 text done is very difficult. It's not something to take lightly. You will not be able to do it unless you focus a little bit. So, one of the things that you really want to do as you get into your game, and it will change from game to game which one of these wheel sections you focus on, but you're going to want to focus primarily on one or two wedges in the wheel. You will not be able to spread yourself so thin that you do a little bit of everything. That tends to be counterproductive in this game. Um, you'll have to do that on a small scale. So maybe, you know, these first two or three sections you can put a, a few points into. But once you start getting further and further down, it requires more focus to get to the next tier. And one of the things that's really detrimental to trying to get too many of the low level techs is that each time you learn a technology, the next one costs more. So every technology has a base cost and a, what's the word? A variable cost, I guess. The base cost is based on what tier it's in. So obviously all the tier one technologies are gonna have a low base cost. However, the later and later you get into the game, these technologies still cost more because every technology you've already unlocked makes the next one cost more keep that in mind you have to focus and you have to focus on one or two wedges really I, I don't think you can do more than that um, it's at least at going to tier 5 techs it gets very difficult to except maybe in a very very long game or a very very science focused faction that has the ability to ramp up their science and get to more science than any other faction even then, I think it's it's practically impossible to, to fill out most of this wheel. You're going to have to make choices, and the choices that you make really need to be based on what am I doing for the next 10 to 20 turns? What do I need for the next 5 to 10 turns? What do I need for the next 10 to 15 turns? If your focus is on the future, you're going to be picking things that you can use, and you never want to just grab something just because you have to. You really want to make sure that whatever it is you're grabbing is something that you're going to specifically benefit from in the very near future. That being said, if for some reason you do grab a technology that you don't end up using, you can't beat yourself up about it. You got to just keep moving forward. But doing that one too many times throughout the course of a game will essentially cripple you because the ones that you didn't really use, the technologies that you're not really putting to good effect, are making everything that you need in the future cost more. And if you had done a little bit better planning, which is hard to do when you're new to the game, um, you would have been more successful. So if you find yourself in the mid to late game having a lot of trouble with technology and with the cost of research and just, I need, it, I need to get this done, but it's going to take me 15 or 20 turns to do it now, and by the time I get it finished, it's too late. That could largely be due to the fact that you're over-researching things that you don't need. And maybe you need to laser focus on one wedge or um, one strategy a little bit more. So keep that in mind as you're playing in the future and I think you'll see some improvement in your gameplay. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been informative and if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section. I am looking forward to providing you guys with some Vaulters content in the very near future and I will go ahead and um, continue to provide new videos on some of my other content um, North Guard videos are probably going to be incoming again soon. I've just been waiting for people to uh, view my videos a little more. So I'm thinking the Stag Clan video is probably going to hit 100 views in the very near future. I'll probably be doing a follow-up video with the Stag Clan. And any of my other videos that start getting more attention, um, I'll be making more of. I think I have at least one more video of uh, Total War Warhammer to do before I feel like I can finish that series off. Um, unless people really want me to continue doing it. 
and um, yeah I'm, I'm having a lot of fun doing this um, I really appreciate all the support from everybody uh, and uh, I hope you guys all have a great day this has been the nose plays catch you next time <laughs>